That would you rather is crazy, bro. You like that one, huh? That's, that's a great one. That's actually a great one. But it's one thing that you forgot. That generates them for you. It's one thing that you forgot that I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna bring in that's gonna hurt you. It's gonna hurt you deep on this question. I'm going to tell you this, right? So y'all know we started the show with a would you rather. And Chris brought up the excellent would you rather today of would you rather have to hunt all of your food or would you only be able to eat McDonald's? And I'm going to tell you this. Chris, you got caught lacking on this one because you're forgetting one thing about McDonald's. You legitimately can't name like 10 foods off the top of your head that's super popular that they never made at any point in time. Like you can't. That think about it. They what mm-hmm. name ten food? They got breakfast foods. They got French toast. They got they had uh, the little waffle sticks. They got pancakes. Even though the they, they you, pancakes, you the know syrup, it ain't good. The syrup you. never go in the pancakes, bro. The syrup just, <laughs> it just be sitting on top. It's, <laughs> it's disgusting. Disgusting work. Uh, but but they had spaghetti at one point in time, bro. They had pizza. Remember when they had pizza? Ill. I don't think I, I ever tried it. it. I remember it. I don't, I don't think, think I ever tried it. Yeah, no, I never tried it. I never tried it, but they had it. But they had it. <laughs> I don't remember they had spaghetti either, Loki. I remember the spaghetti for sure. Oh, I re- no, the spaghetti was crazy. <laughs> the spaghetti was like, bro, what is y'all on right now? Like, what is happening right now? The spaghetti was introduced in the early 70s. Disgusting work. Disgusting work. <laughs> ew. Ew. That's, 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 uh-uh. That's crazy. But yeah, I I probably go with McDonald's, bro. I'm not trying to hunt everything. The only thing that might help, the only thing that might help is the fact that like if you know some country people, like you could be like, "Oh yeah, like y'all just sell me some of your animals and like I'll breed them or whatever. And, like y'all help me out with how to breed them and how to take care of them and all that." My thing Even, is are are these and this would you rather? Are these McDonald's meals paid for? I mean, yeah, oh. for the sake of argument, yeah. Oh, it, oh, okay. that's easy. That's yeah, easy. I'm going with yeah, that, just, that just made it real easy. That's that just uh, made it super easy. I, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going hunt because let's say I kill a deer, right? That's food for a whole week, right there, right? And you can have deer steak, deer jerky, deer chops, Is it though? deer burgers. Is it th- you a Liver King type of guy, huh? You a Liver King type of guy? <laughs> I mean, because ain't no, no way eating for no, a week if, if, if you kill a big doe. Well, yeah, yeah, okay, I get it. Yeah, I must say. Yeah. Right? And then another thing y'all forgetting is you could go fishing. But hold on, see, here's the other part. Here's the other part, bro. Like, like, and and this is trash. This is trash. But like, it's a lot of foods that you really can't. Like, you can't. Where are you gonna fish for lobster? Like, where are you gonna fish I mean, for lobster? I get it, but where are you gonna get lobster at McDonald's? At? Did McDonald's ever have mm-hmm. lobster? Let's ask the question. Did McDonald's I, I have don't lobster? Think so, bro. McDonald's hey, lobster. hey, McDonald's had lobster rolls. They had lobster rolls. Where? When? New England McDonald's apparently had lobster rolls. Listen, bro, I live in New England, bro. I ain't no lobster rolls and no McDonald's out here. I'm, I, bro, I swear on everything I love, I'm on McDonald's.com. I'm on US product lobster roll. I'm looking <laughs> dead at this straight from their website. But that's why I said McDonald's is the easy choice because they had almost everything, bro. Like, yeah. you name it, they probably had it. Now, granted, nah, I'm never bro. eating a big rib. I don't care how down bad I get. I'm never eating a big rib, bro. I'm never coming back to the gives me, Guyton gives me big rib vibes. I ain't gonna lie. Guyton, Guyton will for sure eat a big rib. Why are you disrespecting me like that on this, on this public forum? Why am I being disrespected like that? <laughs> why? No, I ain't gonna lie. This the, this the nasty, this why the McRib is nasty ass work or nasty work, bro. Why, why is it shaped like a rib? But it was never any bones in it, bro. Look, look, I'm, not, not, I'm not gonna hold y'all. Fat era, fat era, Josh. Like elementary, middle school. I for sure used to bang some big ribs, bro. I for oh, sure used to bang some big ribs. Nasty, Honestly, by the time nasty. I by the time I hit like 14, 15, I didn't even eat fat. Like I can count on y'all my hands how many times I had fast food in the past like decade. But that's the thing, though, like. After so long, bro, McDonald's will tear your body up so much to the point where you will be sick, bro. They had snack wraps and salads. If it's free, okay, yes, but but it's still. But it's after you done had a hundred of them, bro, it. your body is gonna repulse it, bro, bro. If it's free, 
If I figured out. Yeah, I figured out if it's free. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I used to work at Pizza Hut, and everybody when I got that job at Pizza Hut was like, "Bro, you're not gonna want to eat this food all the time. Like, it's gonna get gross to you after a while because like you're eating it all the time." And guess what? Till the day I left there. Every night before I left, I would make myself exactly what I wanted and take it up out that spot. Every night. How long did you work there, there though? Free. I How long did you like, work there? I want to say like eight months, eight, nine months, something like that. I don't think that's long enough. All right. Bro, it was, I worked the at people, KFC. Every time we had leftover chicken, I took it home to the crib. Bro, the people who was there shorter than me was like, you're going to get tired of this food and it's just so nasty. And I'm like, bro, it's free. I'm not. <laughs> but I, worked, I worked at Wendy's for a good like two years though. Like I was taking that food home every day. But I will tell you, since I don't work there no more, my body is like, yo, we not finna eat no Wendy's, bro. And I ain't worked my there in 10 years. I got that for KFC, bro. I, I just was like, I'm gonna bro, tell you, I can go back there and make my own chicken. I don't want no part. Bro, y'all don't understand. <laughs> y'all don't understand, bro. This is, this is entrenched in who I am, bro. Like how I'd be joking about I got that absentee father in me. Let me let me let y'all in on another joke about how like my family does pre food, right? Y'all remember when Art Van used to have that like little pizza thing where like if you showed up, it was like free pizza. Yeah. And, like, bro, no, no, like not even joking. Not even like the slightest bit of joke. Every year, like my pops was definitely a rolling stone. You never knew when you was gonna see him or when you wasn't. But every year Art Van free pizza day, you knew you was going to see, bro, because he was going to take us. Cause he was gonna, <laughs> everybody was going to get, like, a whole piece of day. So it got so bad that people at Art Van knew us. Like, when we pulled up, they knew what time it was. They knew we wasn't finna get no furniture, bro, but it was free pizza day. So you went in there, you cracked the pizza, you cracked the Sprite or 7 Up or whatever little mm. pop they had, and you kept mm. it pushing. Like, bro, I'm sorry, I'm not passing up free food. I'm not because and here's the other part about the honey. You need hunting utensils. Like you need you gotta pay for supplies to hunt with. Like and, and again, McDonald's has had everything. So to me, it's like, you know, like, yeah, of course you're gonna eat a double quarter pound. They have had everything, but I'm saying if we had to pick today, right? Today's McDonald's menu. Or hunt all your meals. I mean, if it's today's McDonald's menu or hunt, that's a little different because they don't I don't think they got salads no more. Do they still got salads? They don't even have salads. They wasn't selling them. They wasn't selling them. They gotta, them. Have, they they gotta have salads, no bro. They got to. But when I, when I was growing up, they had salads. I remember because when I was- They had salads I, at all fast food places. They got rid of all of them because they when I was, them. When I was playing in Power League, we had a weight limit. And like they used to make me eat salads when they went out to like uh, like places like that. I would like have to eat the salads. I used to be, bro, sitting there weeping into that Caesar salad. So tough, bro. Like. I, I would I too would like a double cheeseburger. I don't want this salad, bro. I don't want to eat this salad. But you know, that's that's just me. That's just me. So wait, all they right, really so, did get rid of the salads. That's that's disgusting you. word. That's <laughs> disgusting. I told you. That's disgusting. They was not selling them. I thought you was tweaking. The profit, the profit hey, but the margin on those was terrible. <laughs> but that but that's that's what I'm saying. So if you say just today's, all right, then I'll go ahead and hunt, cause whatever, like all right, fine. You would the, die. The, the range of stuff to eat at McDonald's today is like this big. But back in the day, boy, they had everything. They had everything here. Again, I'm looking on hey, the bro, I might have to go a hunt, bro. I'm looking yeah, at this. Yeah, I can't yeah. be eating that every day, bro. Yeah, that menu is crazy. That menu is crazy. <laughs> bro, what? That menu is crazy. Bro. Yeah. Because it's no, it's no fresh greens on there. It's no fresh greens on there. Like, at so, all. Yeah, it's no fresh greens. Only is the, the only sandwich that got lettuce on it now is the Mc, McChicken. Literally. Bro, maybe I just get like, yo, let me get 50 uh the little apple slice boxes, bro. That, that's all I'm at to do. Not them to like, them kids, sugar, them sugar down, too. Bro, chicken sandwich, filet fish nuggets, and the rest is burgers. That's the only thing that's, that's like... Aside from breakfast, that's the only thing that's on this menu. And a bit rid sometimes. <laughs> Bro, what? This is wild. Again, if we talking all the stuff they ever made, I will go McDonald's. But if we talking just they made you right now, I'll do hunting. I mean, I guess. Because, like, you got to pay to live. Like, whatever. But that that just made my food way more expensive, bro. Like, I'm I'm crying and throwing up at this point. Cause, but like, you got to really because... You can you can kill one big deer dog, right? At 
bag that up, put it in the freezer. You go fishing, have some fish in the freezer. Chris. You can even go, like, if you go deep blue fishing, you can get some shrimps and stuff like that. Chris, just a quick question for you, my brother in Christ. What state doesn't require a hunting license or fishing license? Uh, not, I'm saying after you buy all that, though. And then, and then, then, then hear me high. out. Hear me out. This what, that's what I'm saying. Even after you get that, even after you get the license, what are you going to hunt the deer with? You, you're not killing a deer with your bare the, hands. The investment is high, Gibbs. But what I'm saying is the long term, the return of your investment, you will eat for free for a while. Oh, wow. Bro, you talking about a man that's gone ice skate a giraffe and to hold off two bears? You sleeping with my man's Chris, bro? <laughs> Chris is not MacGyver. He's not that guy. He's not that guy. I'm telling you right now, Chris would get clapped in that scenario. He was not making it out that mall, bro. That ten billion would have just been sitting there up in the air because you was not making it out that mall, my brother. In Christ. It <laughs> Unless it was like, if it was like Mall of America, you could do it. Like if it was like. The, uh, a space big enough to where it's like, eh, odds that you see them pretty slim, sure. But like, if you was like in in like uh, one of these little mini malls, twelve like, oaks. <laughs> if you was oh, if you were at twelve oaks, you're done. You're done for, bro. You're <laughs> not really because you could you could climb the walls and tell twelve oaks and stay up there for a minute. But they but I, can't, I, I but that's tough. But can't can't like bears smell up to like what a mile? Pretty pretty damn far. They they can they how how far yeah, are bears, man? yeah but but what I'm saying is they can't climb up a bear wall like just like we can't they can't climb up a bear wall they didn't need something to like come so how would you get up the wall Chris I mean it's a lot of ways I could tie, tie something <laughs> on me and then you know figure out a way it's, 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 bro, it's, 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 exactly. this man think he got he's about to repel up the wall and you better be glad there was safari mm -hmm. animals because you know the worst bear of a ball was not in that category it was uh the worst bear of a ball is is uh polar bears and lord jesus polar bears are not omnivorous like most bears they are hyper carnivorous meaning all they eat is meat and they go out of their way to get bigger meat and bigger prey that's so yeah if it was a polar bear in there <laughs> Yeah, lost too much discovery yeah. channel, man. I ain't gonna lie. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Steal. But anyway, anyway, we got the NFC Championship went down. The the quarterbacks from San Francisco went down. At that point, they called Josh in to play quarterback, but he was a little busy. He was a little preoccupied at that moment. So uh, they had Christian McCaffrey fill in with a Wildcat quarterback until uh, somebody was able to get back in there. We had Burrowhead Stadium and and a win for the Chiefs. And um, uh, what, what's his name? What's his name? Travis Kelsey calling folks jabronis and telling people to shut their <laughs> mouth and know their place. I know the wrestling fans out there love that. Know, know your role. Know your role and shut your mouth. You know, that's, that's what's <laughs> going on there. And of course, and of course, we got to talk about the missed foul on LeBron at the end of the game. And the last thing we're going to get to today, we got to get to this because there was a very heated conversation about this before the show. Anthony Edwards and his diet, because according to what he told GQ, he has one of the most <laughs> absurd diet practices that I have ever heard of in my life for a professional athlete. Y'all ready to get in the show? Yes, I'm sir. ready. All righty. Well, let's get into it. What's up, y'all? Have a seat. It's your favorite hour of the week with the Facts Over Axe crew. We got the master, the mix master of the building, Josh Guyton. That is I. We got the money man, the man for man, Chris Allen in the building. Right here, right here. And then you got the little old MC. That's me, Ken Gibbs. Now, fellas, we're looking at these championship games. And, of course, like I already alluded to, almost everybody who was in a 49ers uniform got hurt at some point in time in that game. Fred Warner went down early, came back at some point. Um, and, and of course, Brock Purdy tore his UCL. And uh, Josh Johnson got hurt as well. And the Eagles defensive line continued to feast and destroy folks. Trent Williams got kicked out for throwing people around. Long story short, the Eagles routed them 37 to 10. Smash mouth football against smash mouth football. And they were a little bit more smash mouth than the 49ers. What did y'all take away from that game? Um, my takeaway from that game is what I've been saying all season that the Eagles are the best team in football. And at the same time, I think um I know, I know what. Two weeks ago, I was really big on a Purdy train. 
But you were, you were. <laughs> but but if the forty nine ers tell us Purdy was a franchise quarterback, let that be known, America. Guy trying to tell me again, <laughs> Purdy was a franchise quarterback. That young man got smoked in that game, boy. They said, <laughs> they said roll up the Purdy pack and make sure they ain't got no seeds in it, boy, because they. It, it was disgusting for them. What, what they got will admit on this on this podcast is when I'm wrong, and uh, the 49ers need to put something in place seriously this offseason at quarterback if they want to uh, compete with this core that they have. Because I think they might have one more year with this core, but I think that's even iffy. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the Niners struggling to get a playoff spot next season. Mm. Okay. All right, Chris, what did you take away from this game? I think it's pretty steep. They went all in, and then they really had to go all in on quarterback. Like, literally, they was like, hey, bro in the stands looked like he could throw the ball 25 yards. Grab him. And then it was so <laughs> steep to the point, did y'all speak? Christian McCaffrey lined up at QB a couple times? I did. Yeah, I did. Like, like, like that was steep. It was like once you know how you look at your phone real quick and something somebody sends you. I look down, right, and I look back up. I'm like. Christian McCaffrey, quarterback. And then next thing I know, I look down again, the ball way over Darius Slay's head is not one receiver in that area. It's like, wh- wh- what's going on? <laughs> like, that was just a mess, man. That was every 49ers fan dream. Your bad dream came true. Your good dream, it just nothing could go right for that team. It, it was it was a disaster, honestly. I expected, we all picked the 49ers because we expected them to the stars on that team to outshine the bat, you know. Wait, 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 wait. We all picked the 49ers. Yeah, we all did. No, I, know, we, I was just about to say, we did not all pick the, the 49ers. Eagles in the Super Bowl during the preseason. We did, and I said that it was going to be Eagles and Chiefs in the Super Bowl. I said we're going to be Eagles and Chiefs. I picked the 49ers. No, see, <laughs> yeah. see, that's, that's no, 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 that's hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to run the taste back because I remember we all was like, the Eagles ain't never knocked on the door first. Right, and, mm-hmm. and we was like, we going with the Niners. No, I said it was gonna be a close game. I've, I'm one million percent sure I picked the Eagles. I had Eagles and Bengals in the Super Bowl. I'm fairly certain I said it was gonna be Eagles Chiefs when the playoffs started. Gibbs said, Gibbs said Eagles to, Chiefs. I've stuck to that. I, I listen. I, I'm telling you, I think I thought Niners, I, the 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 thing that I will admit I have wrong. I thought the Bills were gonna beat the Bengals and it was gonna be Bills and Chiefs, but yeah, I'm I. Did it's not. hard to play I had Eagles Bills. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you, let me tell you something right here that I learned from this game. What I learned from this game right here is that Eagles defensive line is even better than we thought. I mean, oh my God, it was like. They had something for everything that 49, the 49ers wanted to do. And that's crazy to me because a lot of the 49ers offense is based on quick game, get the ball out the quarterback hands right away, have our weapons, get the ball in space and make something happen. And the Eagles were there every time. They tried double reverse passes. They tried fake reverses. They tried yeah. outside zone, inside zone traps. They tried RPOs. They tried, they tried it all. And everything that they did, the Eagles were rating right there. Hey, friend, how are you? <laughs> oh, it was so nice of you to join us today in this hole. Uh, you're not going to go any further, but it was really nice of you to join us today. And that that was just, you know, a very, very tough time there. But this game was not very competitive at all. I, I feel bad for 49ers fans because, like, you know, one 49er fan said that they didn't feel like this was a game that they lost, per se. They felt like it was taken away from them to some degree. And I'm like, I, as much as I hate when fans say stuff like that, I actually agree. I actually, again, Josh Johnson was at the crib a couple weeks ago, bro. <laughs> right. That man was chilling. He was not on this 49ers rock. That man was at the crib playing Madden. And they hit him up and was like, hey, Josh, man, uh, you, uh, you, you, you got some availability? He said, I mean. <laughs> you up? He said, I mean, I'm trying to get the drone on 2K. I mean, this season drone looked pretty cool, but I <laughs> guess, I guess I'll come back to the league. So, I mean, I, you know, you, you kind of go feel bad for them. But the game where everybody was talking, I mean, the players were talking, nothing's impressive about the Bengals offense and it's Burrowhead Stadium and we're the big dogs on the block in the AFC, said Joe Mixon. And yet after the game, <laughs> Patrick LeVon Mahomes Sr. 
said we smoking on that Joe Burrow. <laughs> Travis Kelsey said Burrow head my ass. I believe I can say ass without us losing our clean rating. I'm literally just quoting the man, but he said Burrow head my ass. I think we all right. That's what was said by Travis Kelsey. And the, hey, the Kelsey funny, bro. Kelsey funny. God, it's, it's so lame, bro. <laughs> it's, it's so cringy. It's so cringy. Especially when you watch the podcast with him and his brother. And it's like, this is really good content. And you don't talk like that, Travis. This is not how you talk. And you, know the funniest, you know the funniest thing? You remember uh, those allegations came out about Travis Kelsey being cheap? Yeah. How much money do Travis Kelsey make a year? Oh, he's he's making tens of millions. I want to say like twenty. <laughs> they asked him, "Is that what it was?" He was like, "No, of course not. I'm not cheap. I'm a grown man. I take care of my woman. I send her fifty dollars here and there." He was dead serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro. I send my shorty fifty dollars here and there, and Travis Kelsey makes exponentially. <laughs> Tra- Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey. Uh, uh, just just in his salary alone. Before we talk anything about the endorsements and all that, he's clearing about um, fourteen million dollars a year, a little over fourteen million dollars a year. So. <laughs> you see what I'm about? My cheek be was Chris. He Chris start biting his lip. <laughs> he hit her. Hey, he hit her with the. He hit her with the LeBron. You know what? You lawyer. Here's another fifteen. Here go two more feet. Here go two more fifteen for you. <laughs> you know, you know, you too cheap. And listen, y'all, y'all don't understand how cheap Chris is, bro. Y'all don't understand how cheap this man Chris is. Okay, I have a whole sheet of paper of uh, of paper towel here because I was blowing my nose, and I just knew that I was. Wait, 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 wait! You blowing your nose with paper towel? Yeah, it was the nearest thing to me, Chris. I no, didn't care. No, about I ain't hearing that, bro. You better use your shirt. You better use you your shirt. Right I, I ain't hearing that, bro. You blow your nose with paper towel. Hey Chris. Hey Chris. You blow hey, your nose with paper towel. Hey Chris. Crazy. You can tell people you in your, your crib. <laughs> Chris, you can tell people in your crib how to use your paper towel. But my paper towel gonna get used as I see fit. We ain't over here stingy with. We ain't in the drought. I got eighteen eggs in the crib right now. We ain't in the drought. We, in the, we got motion. We got motion over here. All right. I don't worry about me and my paper towel usage. But with that being said, yeah. Um, this was a. Uh, this was a very very. Very interesting game. What do y'all take away from this game? And yes, Travis Kelsey is extremely cringy. But anyway, what do y'all take uh, away from this game? Uh, my takeaway is that the Chiefs did what they were supposed to do. Um, I think the Chiefs are going to fight. As long as they got my homes at the helm, who is still didn't seem like... A lot of people said he was capping. I don't think so. Still didn't seem like he was 100% healthy. Um, but Wait, they I, thought he was capping about being hurt? Look on socials. It was a lot of people on socials that thought he was lying. Bro, make 500 million over the next 10 years. Y'all think he got a reason to lie about me? <laughs> right. Like, <what>? <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was clear it was clear that he was hurt. Um, but I I think my biggest takeaway from this game is that although the Bengals lost, neither team needs to change anything. The Chiefs got a good enough core there, and they need to um, just continue riding along i mean a lot of people think that the chiefs have underachieved and they should have more super bowls at this point um and the Bengals, although that they lost the thing around the Bengals was this is a very young team and they overachieved what was their over under last season with five wins i think yeah it was something like that and they made the super bowl and I think a lot of people weren't expecting them to repeat that performance, and they made an AFC championship. And all of their core pieces are still very young, even in NFL terms. They still got another good three, four years out of most of their skill positions. So I say the Bengals don't change anything, although they, you know, lost. It was only a three-point loss, and you're looking at a core that's going to be together for a, a, hopefully a handful of years. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm going to say this. I took away from this game um, that there is entirely too much talking by people who are new to this and not true to this. Uh, why are all these folks doing all this talking? And then when, when the things hit the fan, Eli Apple ain't tweeted in five days. What's going on, Mr. Apple? His mama deleted her Twitter. <laughs> now, wait a minute now, Miss Annie. You was you was having a good time there, Miss Annie. Why you why you do, why you deactivate? 
What's going on there? What's 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 happening there? The mayor again. I was telling I was telling a good friend of mine this earlier. This like this country as a whole has a lot of corny people. A lot of corny, very cringy people. Yeah. The mate the mayor saying, "Oh, we need Joe Burrow to take Joe Burrow and Pat Mahomes to take a paternity a paternity test to determine whether or not Joseph Lee Burrow is Patrick Mahomes' father." What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, we won three times against the Chiefs, and ha ha ha, we are the better team. And then Joe Mixon with the most Memphis Grizzlies statement I've ever heard in my life: "We the big dogs on block in the AFC." How? Where is y'all Super Bowl ring? <laughs> you can get to. You're talking about you being the big dog on the block when there's another team in your conference that hosted or went to. No, I believe it's hosted. Four straight AFC championships coming into this one. How are you the big dog on the block? Who gave you that title? Are they in the room with us now? I don't believe they are. So I again, the the Bengals are are real, they they teetering on Memphis Grizzly territory. And I'm gonna say this: the Bengals got two years to get it done. They got two years. You know why they got two years to get it done? Because they're gonna have some tough decisions come two years. Yeah. They're going to they gonna have to pay out Mr. Burrow, Mr. Burrow head. They're going to have to pay him out. And you know what I think is hilarious? This is my last thing on the trash talking. The Chiefs, the, they literally were the Michael Jordan, and I took that personally mean. Those first couple drives, in Joe Burrow's first nine dropbacks, he was sacked four times. Hey, hey, mm. hey. The best player in this game all night, Chris Jones. And Chris Jones was the first one to say, we'll see y'all in Burrowhead. He, that man, to say he got that dog in him is an understatement. He has something different (laughs) in him. He has something that's like, hey, you're, y'all like that. Can you look up something real quick? What you need, man? Where the the Chiefs defensive line ranked in the NFL this year real quick. All right, we're gonna look up most sacks. We're gonna look up most sacks in the NFL this year. We're gonna look up most sacks in the NFL. Because I got a couple of, my, my opinion on this game is pretty it's, a, it's a really, really crazy when y'all gonna think when I when I when I start talking. But that's the only stat I'm missing. Uh so in terms of sacks, most sacks per game, wait a minute, that gotta be for the playoffs, because ain't no way. Oh no, it's not for the playoffs. I told you, right, right. That's why I wanted you to look it up. That's why I wanted you to look it up. Kansas City was second this season in sacks per game. Right, right, right. So, so here's my philosophy on the game, right? The Chiefs finally, 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 and they did it all season. They obviously they didn't want to see, you know. The Chiefs played Chiefs football. If you look at that, right? Look at that, right? Second mm-hmm. in the league in sacks. They've huh. been doing it all season. So what did they do differently? I mean, nothing. okay. They just played their game. Uh, another thing, they've been one of the best passing offices for the last five years. Yeah. Another stat that's like, not nah, it wouldn't blow your mind away. Another thing, they run game is severely underrated. They run it back to really make move the ball. No. Yeah. Another thing, Kelsey is is, is a much miniature version. His numbers is similar to Gronkowski's numbers. I mean, I would say they're better in some regards. In terms of playoff performances, in terms of playoff performances, he's the only person that he's trailing in many statistical categories is Jerry Rice. That's it. Exactly. So I don't know how people had to surprise. This is who the Chiefs are. The Bengals just woke up last year and decided they're gonna be a decent football team. Okay. This this is who the Chiefs are. So the Bengals do all this rip rap, and they ain't never did nothing before. It's giving Memphis Grizzlies time two. Not no, it's borderline. It's giving Memphis time two. Eli Apple, you was on four teams the last six years, and you hey. got the nerve to open your mouth. Sh- Shady McCoy said you're not even one of the guys that could pick your own number on the team. I said, bro, what? <laughs> that's, hey, listen, that's listen, crazy. They did, a, they did a side by side. Because somebody was like, he liked the Patrick Bradley of the league. Then somebody was like, hold on, hold on. Patrick Bradley got a first team ball defense. What yeah. do Eli Apple have close to that? Yeah. And everybody was like, you right, bro. He don't got he's, nothing on Pat he, Bev. Again, he's first team all Twitter fingers. And that's that's why it's killing me. Listen, 
it's kept you can't be like that. And then after the game, you and your moms. That, that that's one thing why I say time Memphis times too, right? Because if you look at Memphis, they are lose. When they lost to the Warriors Christmas Day, you know they went back. Oh, we're gonna see him again. We're gonna see him again. Don't worry about it. We're gonna see him again. They well, they do again. Home. <laughs> well, well, we ain't gonna talk about that. But they, 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 at least they start talking after the L. They, they start talking after the L, right? But these Bengals, they 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 went missing like the Avatar. They, you can't find them. <laughs> when, the, when the world want to see what they gonna say next, the mayor, I want the mayor arrested. I want, why are you butting into this? That's like. I ain't gonna make that Kwame joke. I'm sorry. I ain't gonna make that Kwame joke. I'm not gonna make that Kwame joke. But, hey, listen. But, all, all, all I'm gonna say is this: when you talk that talk like they did, when you call it Burrowhead Stadium and all that, you got to show and prove, baby. You got to show and prove, and that they did not. They did not show up. And here's here's the the last thing I'm gonna say about this because again, like I said, they got to make some deci- tough decisions in a couple years. But even beyond that. There is a reason that one of y'all has been to five straight. There's a reason. There's a reason. And I'm sorry to say this, but for as good as Joe Burrow was at many points in the game, when it when the world needed him most, he pulled an avatar. He said, hey, I don't know what y'all got going on, but uh, I ain't going to be there. One last thing on this game, Gibbs. 58, he really played a hell of a football game. He did. He really also, played, played a, a good, football He played a good game. Yeah. He really did. They be a little too hard on bro. He made one mistake that cost them the game. But honestly, what they really go, you know, you gave Mahomes ten seconds and he had the ball. He could, you know, and got a first down. All he needed was six yards. You can't really talk that ill to him. Y'all had plenty of opportunities to win that. Mahomes was on one foot and y'all were sacking him, and y'all let him come back and win that game. That touchdown pass he threw over the middle was a was a beauty though. That was that was like when I. You know, if they win the Super Bowl this year, I think we got to go overall skill-wise. We got to take A-Rod out of there and put Mahomes in there if they win this year. Honestly. A-Rod has had a much better receiving core. He's always had a hold much on, better Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. A-Rod is already out of there. No, I don't. No. Oh, I don't no, care no, if he no, wins okay. the Super Bowl or not. I, some people was calling me wild for saying that. Some people was no, calling me wild for saying that. No, no, no. You said it's no, most no, skill no, whatever? Most yeah, in terms of, yeah. In terms of a quarterback doing multiple things. Yeah, yeah, uh, you got that. He, that's his. Mahomes, that's... Mahomes, I think Mahomes is gonna be the most skilled quarterback ever, bro. He literally yeah. can do everything. He get out the pocket. He was out the pocket on. He put the team on his back and got a game winning run. Let me explain something to you. I say Mahomes is... stole sidearm forty yards into a tire. I say you got it, bro. Let me explain something to you. <laughs> you this man talking about sidearm. I saw this man parallel to the ground, throw a dot. To uh, Miko Hardman, y'all remember that play against the mm-hmm. Bucks? That pass alone, you know, there are many times where people say, "Oh, there's only five guys in the NFL that could do that," or "There's only two guys in the NFL that could do that." I'm gonna take this through NFL history. There is one guy in NFL history that can make that pass. It ain't Tom Brady. It ain't Aaron Rodgers. It is Patrick LeVon Mahomes the second. Because that <laughs> pass, again, that man was being chased down, had his legs cheetah tackle from under him, falling down. Literally, body. The, with, the, he's, the redacted swung his body to the to side. The side. <laughs> to the side. And, and, and made a pass that hit a receiver in the face mask. That was the moment I gave up on McCole Hartman, by the way. I, that was the moment <laughs> where I was like, yeah, he's not him. He's not going to be a ball hey, player. And you look at his receiving core, bro, he ain't had half the weapons some of these quarterbacks been blessed with. Not at all. Like, if it wasn't for him, his team would be cans. Like, that Chiefs team, you take Mahomes out, they don't even make the the wild card. I, I think they can make the wild card. I think they make the wild you card. Take Mahomes you out take Mahomes out? Here's, here's why. Here's why. Just because of how bad the AFC West was. You got... The Raiders, who lost to Jeff Saturday. You got the Broncos, <laughs> Broncos country, let's ride. Let's ride. Don't got to say nothing more. <laughs> Don't got to say nothing more. And you got the Chargers, second okay. largest lead blown in NFL history, and you did it to a guy okay. that had okay. never okay. been to the playoffs before that. Okay, Gibbs, but, but what I'm saying is, 
you take the holes off that team, and all of those teams are better. I don't think they're that bad. On paper, I don't think they're that on bad. paper, on paper, on paper, all them teams is bad on paper. I don't, I don't think they're that bad. I, the, Ra- the Raiders on paper better. The Ra- but that's the thing. See, on paper, the Raiders, on paper, the Raiders were a lot better than what they were this year. But they got this guy called Josh McDaniels, and Josh McDaniels they pissed to drop in the NFL if he wasn't cheating. Literally, the only time that they won, the Broncos players talk about this all the time. They went like seven and zero, and they were like. Man, we don't know where this came from. He had us in the right position every time. They figured out he was cheating. The NFL fined him for that. That and then their record after the cheating, he like he had an extremely losing record after starting seven and zero as a coach there. I don't recall that. Cheating. What was the what was the cheating? Uh, they were like it was something with like I want to say they were like filming opponents practices or something like that. Mm. Hold on, let me, I can look it up for you. But long story short, I don't know if they become worse. Um, I don't know if they become worse with with oh no no I know that they become worse I don't think they become the worst team in the AFC West without Mahomes. I, I don't think they sniff the playoffs without Mahomes, bro. That team without Mahomes is it, it teeters on that line a lot. Yeah, so yep, Bright Josh McDaniels uh, they got fined fifty thousand dollars because he was spying on uh, he was spying on teams and he was videotaping their. Um, he was videotaping other teams uh practices and whatnot. So yeah. Yeah, he was cheating cheating. That wasn't even like a little baby cheat. I don't I don't know how he only got found fifty K for that. That's crazy. Mm. If that's the case, hey, uh Motor City Dan Campbell, the city will take care of fifty K. <laughs> you know what I mean? We'll take care of the fifty K, bro. Do what you gotta do. Do what you gotta do. All they gotta do is close huts for one day and they got fifty K for it. They got fifty K for it. <laughs> We got the fifty k for you, Motor City Dan. But I, I, I just again, I walk away from this game looking at the Bengals, saying y'all talk too much. Shh, do the work, do the work, win the ball games, win the ball games, and you'll be all right. But right now, I mean, listen, no disrespect to them, but uh, they just, they just didn't do it. They just didn't get it done. They did not I get it done. Lie. So I want them to say it was fun one more time. If they would have said it was fun, I would have lost my mind. <laughs> Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, that's. Mm, mm, mm. So who y'all got in the Super Bowl? Um, I got the Eagles pulling it out. I started with the Eagles at the beginning of the season. I think it's uh, I mean, it's it's relatively short, but just how well they've been performing. I got uh, Jalen Hurts getting it done. All right, Chris, who you got? My mind is telling me Eagles fly, Eagles fly. But after the owner made Jalen Hurts sing that song and made him just, you know, I just, I'm going with my homeboy. I'm going with my homeboy. I got my heart telling me go with Chiefs because Patrick Mahomes about to do something that he never did before, and it's about to be a tough day. And I feel like that defensive line being the second best defensive line in football this year, I think they make it tough for Jalen Hurts what he's effective at and getting out the pocket and making you guess what he's going to do. Um, I think the secondary is good for the Eagles. However, I think Mahomes is that much better. I think about how many times, I mean, we just say he's the most skilled quarterback ever. Aaron Rodgers, you know, against that Eagles team would be feeling the same way. Like, it's hard to get interceptions on a player like that. I think Kelsey has a big game. I think, I think. Everything goes right for the Chiefs, and they win in a very narrow victory. Very narrow victory. But my mind is telling the Eagles, but my heart is telling the Chiefs. So I'm going to tell you this. We just pulled up the stats, and, you know, Kansas City playing Kansas City football means them getting to the quarterback. They were the second-best team in the league in terms of getting sacks this season. And Chris Jones, like I said, he was a game-breaker. He dominated. Wasn't close. Wasn't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Against uh, against the Bengals, do y'all know who the first team in terms of sacks this season was? Philly, it was the Eagles. Philly. It was Philly by a fairly big gap too. Philly had four point one sacks per game. Kansas City had three point three. The difference between Philadelphia and Kansas City is the difference between Kansas City and the fourteenth best team. Sheesh. So, with that being said, 
I don't think that they have the offensive line to hold up, and I don't think that Patrick Mahomes. I I hope that he's healthy enough to go full tilt and do all the Patrick Mahomes. Off. That's two weeks. That's two weeks away. You don't think he get it done in two weeks? But you know what? I see a repeat of that Bucks Super Bowl happening again because you remember in that Super Bowl against the Bucks, Mahomes played a heck of a game. The passes that he was making was like, yo, like that's a, that's a one of one pass. Plenty of times, but number one, guys were blanketed, guys were covered. There was nothing you could do there. And number two, they like we already talked about, no run game, no help from Mahomes. You gonna you gonna have your struggle. So with that being said, I'm not sure that they find a way to get it done against these Eagles. I don't. I think that. By the way, they were asking fans of different teams around the league what you would give up for your uh, team to win a championship, and there was a Eagles fan who said that they would give their entire family. That Eagles fan was like thirty. My brother in Christ, you just saw them win a Super Bowl. <laughs> you yeah, just saw it, and you didn't have to give nothing to get it. Like if a Lions fan said that, I understand. Like maybe you love your family, but like it's never happened. Like, literally, since the Super Bowl has existed, we don't have one. By the way, that's as many as the Vikings, because I know Vikings fans like to talk, they talk. We got the same amount, you dorks. You've just been a couple times. Good for you. But with that being said, um, yeah, yeah. I, I got the Eagles winning this one. I got them winning. And I don't think it'll be particularly close. Um, I think it'll start off close. But I think, again... In the words of the Scrubs theme song, I can't do this all on my own. I'm no Superman. <laughs> and guess what? Patrick Mahomes, for all that he is, he ain't Superman. He's a human. He bleeds just like we do. He just so happens to have a 60-yard cannon attached to his arm that uh, none of us have. But at the Man, end of the let day... Let me tell y'all something, though. Let me tell y'all something. So I was on the PlayStation, I want to say two years ago, right? Arguing with my buddies. They were saying that it is extremely easy to throw the ball 50 yards. Huh? I was like, in what world is it easy? They said, you don't got to throw it on a straight line. You can just throw it however and throw it 50 yards. I'm like, do you realize how big your arm has to be to throw 50 yards? Like, like, like I'm a baseball player. I play baseball at the high, one of the highest levels and pitch at baseball at the highest level. And I don't even think I could throw a football 50 yards. And I could throw 80-plus fastball. Yeah, anybody who says it's easy to throw 50 yards has never seen people try to throw 50 yards before. Like, that's that's just the reality. And, and again, if we're talking like throw it like a howitzer, all it has to do is travel 50, yes, that's significantly easier than like trying to complete a 50-yard pass. Right. Sure. But like even still, throwing the ball fifty yards, that's that's no easy task. That's that's not a light thing to do there. So, you know. Anyway, we gotta change on over to basketball because LeBron James was devastated, hurt, <laughs> shocked, befuddled, bamboozled, hoodwinked, run amok, and led astray <laughs> by a no call. I like you. Hey, that's what he was. That's what he was. I ain't going to lie, kids. He's taking me out, man. They said that man reacted like Randy Orton after he hits an RKO when he didn't get that call. (laughs) I ain't going to lie, bro. That's what the streets are saying. That's what the streets are saying. Bro, you too old for that, man. You Mm. too old for that one, bro. Hey, listen. It's crazy. I'm I'm about to say. I'm for it. I'm I'm pro Brian on this one. As long as you're on that court, it better mean something again. But that's that's me because I'm also an unhinged individual that lo- cried after every game I've ever lost in my life. Like, there was not a single game that I lost where I was like, oh, this is fine. This is okay. This is – everything is good here. Like, that's that's just who I am. So, you know, me and Brian are – that one kid on the bus after a loss. Like, bro, I don't know why y'all laughing. I don't know why y'all laughing. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was absolutely that was for me. me when I played baseball. That was, exactly. That was absolutely That was for sure me. me. That was, let me and I didn't I didn't cry in front of my teammates most times. It was literally like I'd just be at home watch a film, like running back to plays, like, damn, why didn't you hit a swim move there? Damn, like you if you shocked the shed right there, we could have won the game. Even if we lost like 42 to nothing. Like, cause there were some games where like 
I played for the Rams in Little League. For those of y'all who don't know, the Rams were not that good. They were not that. <laughs> we were not that deal. You know what I mean? Shout out to the West Seven Rams organization. Shout out to the mile and all my folks over there that I grew up with. But we were not that. We were not that. And uh, for for reference, Ronald Banks was the starting defensive tackle next to me. So, and, and for those Wait, of y'all... Wait, that Ronald Banks? Yes, Ronald Banks. That was the starting... <laughs> hand of God, he was the starting defensive tackle next to me. So that tells you... How big our team I'm was. bigger than dog. You're a lot bigger than dog. You're a lot bigger. <laughs> and again, and again, Lord knows. Lord knows I love Banks, bro. I love his family. They're good people. They are great people. All of his sisters, beautiful, wonderful people. His little brother was a baller too. Great people. We were not a good team. We were not a good team. And yet and still, when I went home and my pops would be like, this is what happened. This is what you did wrong. Da, 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 da. I just start crying. I just, and, and it was like, you know, that's just what it was. So I get it. I get it. I understand. If I was in the NBA at 38, I'd be crying too. Like, bro, I don't got that many years left. <laughs> yeah. Like, this I, I is just, not. Now, like, if if LeBron did this 10 years ago, I'd be on his head. Like, bro, you need to relax. But at the same time, this man, he, his, his I wouldn't say his health is declining, but he's a much healthier LeBron than he's been majority of his career. He out here playing for a team. The Lakers are what the thirteenth seed right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to do that at 38. Yeah, absolutely not. LeBron absolutely doing not. that at 38 is equivalent to us being 38, and we we uh doing another talking stage. That's the Lakers. <laughs> that's the that's the Lakers at 13. So you trying to be at a talking stage when you 38? Oh. Uh... That's uh, that's, uh, that's just 38. Cool. I'm like hanging up the jersey, and I'm like, all right, well, it is what it is. This is my life now. You know, this is what I do. So, what, what movies you like? You know what I'm saying? You ain't trying to do that at 38. I'm not asking what your favorite color is at 38. <laughs> I'm, exactly. not finna ask, I'm not finna ask what temperature do you keep the thermostat at at 38, bro. I'm, if I'm still out here at 38. If so I'm still out here at 38, yeah, take this 40 ball and go on about your way. If I'm still out here at 38. <laughs> so, so, so here's my problem with it, right? Here's my problem with it, right? For one, first things first, Brian, you can't do nothing about it, right? The, 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 the end of regulation happened. You can't do nothing about it. You can pout, cry, whatever. That's the attitude you bring into overtime when you do something like that. That's why I have a problem with it, right? The game, mm-hmm. and then I'm a firm believer, bro. I, I, I go to the graves. My coach would say this. Refs don't cost games. P players do. The, the Lakers was up six points with 40-something seconds left. And they let the Celtics come back. It wasn't more than that. that. Is, they was up 11 with about, with about two, two and something to play. They was up 11. Exactly. So if you do what you're supposed to do, play defense, sit in that chair, and get the ball and, and use that clock, it wouldn't have been no situation where Brian got to drive on four Celtics and then get fouled. And then another thing that made me mad about this, yeah, Brian, Brian is a legend. Brian is the GOAT in my eyes. But was you guaranteed to hit both of them free throws or one of them free throws? Was, you, was it guaranteed? Like, come on now. If the fate of the world was at our, at, at Brian's hands to make a free throw, he would Hey, Chris, stop playing. Hey, Chris, stop playing. Hey, Chris, he be Chris stop playing. Gibbs, hey, Chris. you're not betting your life savings on Brian hey, making two free throws, Chris, bro. Chris, stop playing. You not no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is y'all are putting this scenario wrong. Y'all are saying like I'm betting on him to make both. In that scenario, if he makes either one, they win. So let's start there. Now if somebody you're right. If we're looking at a win loss, if we're talking about the 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 Marsons have the death beam pointed at her and they say, Ken, <laughs> if LeBron the makes one of these, if LeBron they say, Ken, you gotta pick a side. LeBron misses both and y'all die, or he misses uh, or he makes anything other than the result of him missing both, the world will live. But if he misses both, the world dies. What? I'm, I'm, I'm going with Brian to make one. I'm going with Brian to make okay, one. Okay. Okay. Listen, listen, listen. I agree. Brian makes one. Brian makes one. But what I'm saying is he cried and pouting. And, like, you know, it's a whole overtime to play. You blew a lead. And you still would have had to make a free throw. So just because that call didn't go your way, don't mean the game just automatically would have been won. Also, also one last thing here. LeBron is having his, let me make sure I got this correct here. He's having his second best season of all time for the free throw line. So, yeah, I'm cool with that. 
I'm cool with that. I'm, I, I hey, agree. I, I mean, I know about? Brown was going to make one. I know Brown was going to make one. But what I'm saying is, you got to let that blow out. Because I feel like if you look at the Lakers that overtime, Dennis Schroeder play the best because he the only one that didn't go on their power that whole overtime. I'm going to tell you this. When I look at that game and I look at that overtime in particular, I don't know how you would blame Brown for that because he showed up and balled in the overtime as well. He In the overtime, he showed up and did his thing. So I don't know how we can say, hey, LeBron was, was mid or he didn't make it happen. He was three for two in overtime. I want to say he had, what, seven points and played some pretty good defense in the overtime. I don't see how I... But I, I think the, Chris is making a valuable point, though. When you're the team leader and you show that kind of... And, and you show that, the other players might be like, you know what, what is, man? They they, he, they don't even want us to win. Here's my only problem with that type of thing. So you hear they don't even want us to win, and that makes you like, oh, I'm done now. What? Look, this ain't got no dogs. LeBron know who he playing with. Bro, I'm sorry, but Russell Westbrook is the king of why not, right? They uh-huh. don't want you to win. Why not? That's that's the, the thing. Do the thing. <laughs> Do the like, bro, that's your moment. That's your moment to show up and be like, hey, they don't want us to win. They don't want us to show up. They don't want us to do that. We're going to make it happen. Pat Bell walked out there with the camera, with the camera to show the ref that he missed the call. Got a tent. Got a tent now. And did he make up for it in that overtime? Did he Did he show up and say, hey, man, you know what? Don't worry about it, hey, bro. I walking got out with the camera is crazy, bro. Nah, walking out with the camera is crazy. Hey, that's, the, that's the best thing I've ever seen in my life. It was so <laughs> hilarious that he shouldn't have got a tech. Like, I understand <laughs> why he got a tech, but the ref should have been like, yo, this is the greatest. This, this is hilarious, bro. You good. You got it. Very uh, pat damn thing to do. <laughs> Hey, man, yo, 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 and then after getting the tech, pointing at the camera like, bro, you see the video? Like, do you want to see the video? Like, <laughs> I don't think we ever see that again. I don't think we ever see that again, bro. Again, that was a very Pat Bev thing to do. Very Pat Bev. Very, very hey, yo, Pat that's crazy. You know what just so, clicked in my mind? Ain't Russ the one that had the Pat Bev quote that he tricky all? He just he, he just running around. He is. <laughs> Why are they playing together? Because both of them are running around together at this point. They're cardio buddies. <laughs> no, no, They're I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna. They got ability partners. The since, since they put Russell on the bench, bro, he been, he been doing all right, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not, we not gonna do that. We not Chris. doing that. We not doing that. We not doing that. We not doing that. Hold on, Chris. Hold on, Chris. We not doing that. We not doing that. Hold on, Chris. Hold on, Chris. Hold on. You're right. We're not gonna do that. So what we will do is, since we're talking about this game against the the Boston Celtics, let's look at the Oh, he had a horrible game. He had a horrible game that game. Hold on. Hold on. Because you don't understand how bad he was. This was not horrible. This you was picking next one level. game, though. I said since he's been off the bench. But we're talking about this one game. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about this one game. We talk, bro. 4 of 14, all three from deep, seven assists, four rebounds, five turnovers, four personal fouls, negative 10 plus minus. All right, plus minus is one of them stats, ten. though. That's, I, I don't. Any real hooper, no. Plus minus is some BS. Okay, that's fine. Four of fourteen is some BS. No, no, no. I said he had a horrible game, but what I'm saying is, since he came off the bench, though, he's been producing good numbers, like solid numbers. Like he's been better. Salvo's he's been, he's been much yeah. better. I give you that. In in the last, team, that's all I'm saying. He has I'm not, not saying been... his last game he was balling, but no. In the last ten, he has not been terrible. He's been averaging about twenty six and six on forty four percent shooting. That's fine. That's, that's what you want off your, your six man. That's what you want. But again, I I'm looking at this team and I'm saying at the end of the day, if you're gonna blame Brian and say that that reaction was the reason they lost, I don't know how. I don't know how because again, if that team, if that team around him is better, we're not having this conversation. We're not having this conversation. Again, we you talk about his reaction, but he went out there. It's not like he went out there and didn't score a point or take a shot. Looking at you, Pat Beverly, after costing the team a point coming in overtime, looking at you again, Pat Bev, it's not like he did that. The man showed up and showed out. He showed up and hey, did what he was supposed to do. I ain't bringing out the camera like a GoPro. It's crazy, bro. <laughs> Disgusting. <bro. laughs> Disgusting. Now, before we get out of here, before we get out of here, we got to talk about one last thing in the basketball world. Anthony Edwards is apparently screaming best friend at 7.30 a.m. in the <laughs> gas tank corridor. 
in the Cast Tech corridor <laughs> and for the vestibule, according to what's a pink Uggs on that's been leaning for about. With the with the three little bowls on the back too, with the three little bowls on the back. <laughs> and the one with the small so much salt and damage y'all, on the side. Hey, y'all <laughs> talking about somebody in particular, and I know who y'all talking about too. Right, hey, I can name you a couple. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Anybody who know me, anybody who knows me knows I'm doing better now. Like now, even my brokest days are better than my richest days. Back <laughs> but back then, I was poor too. I was broke too, so. I ain't coming at nobody. I'm just saying that that's what Josh Guyton described him as. Because well, I mean, I was I was broke too, but you know, he, it'd be like doing, that. That man is eating, according to himself in a GQ interview, he is eating 21 bags of hot fries a week. This comes after reports that he was out of shape coming into the season, and after Carl Anthony Towns was very upset with his dietary habits and how much he ate Popeye. Uh-huh. Now, fellas, tell me this. Tell me this. How concerned? First of all, do y'all believe the twenty-one bags of hot fries? Yes. And and here, hey. look, look. I'm not saying because look, we talked about it in a pre-show. I fully believe he's eating that many, right? And it's crazy. It's crazy for him to do that. I, I am very concerned about that man's health. Let me get all of those things out of the way. At the same time, I fully believe that it's happening. I fully believe that he's doing it because one, just break it down like this. We just talked about the best friend girl, right? Mm-hmm. So she was banging one of them about 7, 30, 8 a.m. Banging one bag. Mm-hmm. So you telling me after after school, hitting a, hit either the white store, if you go to the white store, you're getting pizza. But if you go into the corner, with my man's working security at the door, you getting some snacks out of there. Right. So she ain't grabbing one at the school. I, I mean, but, sure. but you gotta remember, they had we had twenty five, well, thirty five cent bags back then. We had right. thirty five cent bags. He talking about the three twenty nine bags now. A millionaire. So in relativity, he's spending thirty five cent bags. But can, can we acknowledge how crazy this is? It's nuts. It's, it's nuts. It's but nuts. just hear me out. So let's say they grab one at the school, right? Yeah. So they get home at 3.30. You a teenager. You ain't going to sleep till 1 in the morning. Between 3.30 and 1 a.m., best friend and eat one more bag of hot chips. That's three a day. Seven days a week. That's not that not, crazy. I was just about to say they're not doing that seven days a week because on weekends, they are not. They 15 is still sleep. crazy. 15 is crazy, but it's not 21. <laughs> 15 is still crazy. Hey, listen, 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 listen. This is what I'm going to say about this, right? This is what I'm going to say about this. This is what I'm going to say about this. We all play basketball at some point, like, where you go hoop. Just not even organized or something. Yes. Everybody in this podcast know. I think we all play organized eat. basketball. I think uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, I, I know. Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. Everybody know after you eat a hot bag of chips and you go hoop, what happens? Everybody know. Hey, oh, you're going to throw up. You're going to throw up. Probably your chest <laughs> ain't, no way he eating 21 bags. ain't no, you ain't no way he's eating 21 bags. Ain't no way he's eating 21 bags. The, the, the human the body adjusts. His adjust. body built up an immunity. Bro, the he human body bo- adjusts. He said the tolerance is through the roof. It is. Bro, it'd be on hot ones just chilling. Oh, man. Hey, okay, bro, I'll, I'll, say it like, I'll say it like this. I'll say it like this. How many times did you eat something crazy when you was a kid? You got older, you stopped watching it, you stopped eating it, and you like went ahead and tried it one day, and your body was like, nah. Not often. That ain't never happened to you? Not often. No. All right, so, so Chris, if you it's tried like to eat K- KFC, what would your body it's- do? Well, that's because I, I worked there, though, and I could eat it and I had no problem. But, but yo, but still, if, at, at the same time, Gibbs, when you was eating Pizza Hut every day because it was free, your body, was at, your body wasn't supposed to be eating that every day, but you was adjusting to it. If I eat Pizza Hut today, I'm out of the same problems I had back then. Like, obviously, <laughs> I am, I am, uh, I am but, a But at your so age right now, you can't bang it time. every day, bro. I mean, I wouldn't want to, but I... Your body, I, your body I'm when you was eating it every day, and you were younger, he's what, 20, 21? Here's here's why I don't believe this is a thing. Here's the only reason I don't believe this is a thing. Mm-hmm. You are around a nutritionist. Right. You are around teammates that do not want you eating like that. You are around a head coach that is looking at you like, bro, you're going to be, if we're going to be anything, we're going to need you to be something special. Look, here's my thing. So 
point one, do we know Anthony Edwards' upbringing? Did he grow up like with some bread? Yeah, he grew up in in Atlanta, Atlanta. Like that man is from the trenches. He, okay, okay. So yeah, one, yeah. when he finally gets some bread in his pocket, I don't really think he got a nutritionist or a chef that's at the crib with him. That's a man that's been known to spend his he, to, to spend his bread. He, but he has a nutritionist for the team. There's more uh, sports science folks. I, 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 I understand that, but at the same time, if he don't eat no hot fries when he in a practice facility or they on the road. If you go to the crib and bang four of them, don't nobody know. Why would you bang four? That, bro, hey, what's he do, you know, do you know how crazy that is? I know it's crazy, but think four about it this way. Big bags. Yo, okay. It, it, that me. man is a cha- wait, 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 wait. That man is chain smoking hot fries. I know. Like literally every three seconds. <laughs> Off the top of your head, name me a very unserious NBA franchise. Just with their entire history. It's like three or four that's just like very unserious. I mean, Sacramento I, I, would be one. Uh huh. Minnesota would be two. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, the the Timberwolves are also in series. You you, you you probably got you probably got you can say the Knicks and the Clippers. I don't know about the Knicks. The I would say, say the Knicks. The Clippers. Before, yeah, before, yeah, I will argue, I'll, I'll argue one more. Before Toronto won a championship, Toronto was another one that was on series. But we can agree that the top two is Sacramento and Minnesota. Mm, maybe know. New Orleans before Zion. Maybe New Orleans. Too. I don't know. Orleans, but don't know. are you really surprised? Orlando that... got an argument. Orlando got an argument for the the most unserious. Yeah, the sec- the, sec- the second Penny era saves them. The it seems they make multiple finals in our lifetime. That's fair. That's fair. That's, That's all I'm gonna say. Second Minnesota Penny ain't right. Minnesota been a one conference final since I've been alive. But that, but look at the difference in the Eastern Conference back then and the West. Through I know, but conference. it's also we can all agree that it's a very unserious franchise. Yeah, I get that. So if you telling us that one of their players was doing something crazy, this wouldn't fly if he was playing for the Spurs. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely. That video wouldn't even be on the internet if he played for the Spurs. That video wouldn't even be on the internet if he played for the Lakers. Papa buy the whole San Antonio hot fries and keep them at his house. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So he he's young. He came from the trenches. He we could tell that he, he's not really putting in the work. Like he's gifted athletically, but he's playing the same game a year one that he's playing right now. He hasn't added to his repertoire. He doesn't have any new weapons. I mean, he's, he's playing the exact efficient. same way. He's, he's, sloppy, he's, more, he's more, That's going to happen with you playing in the NBA. You're going to get more efficient just because you're getting used to those defenses. You're getting used to the physicality. You're getting used to the pace of the game. That's right. But that's his true. game hasn't changed in those three seasons. Hey, yo, so if you're telling me an unserious back. player, an <laughs> unserious player playing for an unserious franchise with unserious habits, it's crazy to believe. I don't know. I just told y'all you you can do but the math not, on high banging twenty one in a week. This is not unserious habit. This is not unserious, right? Because hear me out. I just like Lamar Odom and his candy thing, right? Even though my mom told me about that, and like when we were talking about it, because they were like, "Oh, his the amount of sugar that he intakes is the reason that his play is so sporadic." And my mom was like, he's on drugs. And I'm like, what? And my mom was like, sugar don't do that to you. That's booger sugar. I'm like, are you sure? Now, my mom's a nurse. She's been in the medical field for since before I was born. So going on 30 years now, she was like, yeah, he's on drugs. That's not candy. With that being said, um, that's unserious. Like candy, if it actually wasn't drugs, that's unserious. Sure. Bro, we're talking three bags of hot fries. A day. Three dollar bags is crazy, you know, bro. Dollar <laughs> bags. Okay. I'm not gonna hold y'all. I used to bang one of the three dollar bags at Doritos when I was like a really fat kid, like seventh, eighth grade. And I did that for like one summer. And after that summer, I, my body was like, "Yo, you finna be out of here, bro." That's bro, uh, he gonna be a diabetic, bro. <laughs> That no, he not, not he gonna be he bro. gonna have hypertension. That man gonna be he gonna be shaking and throwing up literally. Just bro, it, I'm gonna tell you this. I don't I don't believe it again because of like that's just such an insane amount. And I don't see how anybody eats anything. I'm a routine guy. Like very seriously in terms of like what I eat, all that type of stuff. Very routine. Like on any given day, if somebody's like, oh, I'm gonna murder Kenton. They could easily do it by poisoning all the soy milk in my area because at some point in time, they know that I'm going to make oatmeal with soy milk or the, even better, if they're like a very niche thing that can eat. It would be the, the little protein oatmeal. Like, I love it. I love it. I eat that at least five times a week at minimum. Mm-hmm. 
I don't eat it three times a day. <laughs> I can't think of anything I ever ate three times a, three times a day ever. I'm t- I'll, I'll tell you this: when I was dead broke, when I was like literally, when I before I was don't say no ramen times, noodles, bro. Don't say ramen. No, I used to eat uh, grits. I used to eat grits three times a day, but I would like eat it in different but ways. But you get multi-purpose grits though. Yeah, high fries yeah. is gonna be high fries. So what you what you would do is like in the morning you would have like grits and eggs and then like for yep. lunch you would just do grits with like salt pepper and like yeah, some regular savory. grits and then at night dinner you, you do, might cut a couple of sausages on there you or something do shrimp and grits or, <laughs> yeah. or sausage and grits or chicken and grits you know it, but it was always like grits three times a day not because i wanted to but because i was broke and i'm like mm-hmm. you need to put calories in your body somehow and like that was it bro there is no way if i'm a millionaire i'm buying hot fr- First of all, I don't eat hot fries, period. <laughs> I don't eat hot fries, period. Because even as a child, like the way that you talk about how, um, the way that the guy talks about how, uh, what is it? The brown White, White Castle. White Castle. Oh, White the, way Castle. You talk about how, the way you was like, I was an eight-year-old having heartburn. Like, no. That's, I was that's eight. What, that's, what, <laughs> that's what hot fries did to me. Like literally, I would eat hot fries. I'd be like, bro, why my chest feel like this? Mom, is everything okay? Should my chest feel like this? My chest feel hot. And she was like, you just got heart, heartburn. Don't eat that again. And I was like, okay. You got it. <laughs> like, that's it. Bro, 21. So let me ask y'all this. With what we know about his diet and what we know about his game, do you think he will ever be the number one option on the championship team? Or or let me not even say that. Let me not because I think I think our consensus here would all be no, right? I think we'd all say nah, no not, to not one, one option. Okay, let me no, ask not number this. one for sure. Let me ask y'all this: Would y'all have taken him with the number one pick? If you know now what you knew then, would you have taken him with that number one pick? Uh, I wouldn't have taken him with the number one pick then, and I still wouldn't do it now. I, I would, I would have because James Wiseman was the next best thing, and I wasn't drafting James Wiseman. That was twenty twenty uh, draft. Yep, yep. It I was believe him, so. Melo, and James Wiseman. I might have went mellow, but at the time, you know, the Timberwolves didn't really need LaMelo the way they were structured. True. I'm so I would still, still go him at one. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to everything I know. Now I might take Halliburton at one. I'm going to tell you this. I said this before, and I said it again. If I was holding that one and he was the guy, trade that pick. Somebody going to be thirsty. Somebody going to want to throw me a crazy bag for him. Hey, y'all want this guy? He's a real good one. Great Listen, character man. guy. Great around the team. And let me tell you this. The only thing holding him back now is his diet's trash. But when he gets to the NBA, he'll improve it. Scouts <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. I'm going to say this, bro. If the diet was the only thing I had to worry about, I would draft him too, bro. I, I, I would draft him too. Because after a while... He going to start, after beating that in his head, like, bro, you have to change your diet. You have to change your diet. It's a lot of players that came to the league and didn't change their diet right away, right? And then they changed their diet later, and they had a long JV career, right? Mm-hmm. Can I tell y'all something? In that draft class, there is only one player so far, one player so far to have made an all-star game or an all-NBA team only one and that is LaMelo Ball again I'm trading that number one pick somebody would want him somebody would have been like hey I, he's the next guy he's the next coming and I would have been like yeah take him take him I, I will say one thing I, just, I got a question for y'all actually so I can agree that all three of us uh, for me and our age we have relatively like damn good diets yeah um what is the one thing diet wise that like regardless of how healthy you eat, you see I got a gal- gallon of water. I drink a gallon of water a day. Mm-hmm. Like, what's the one thing that y'all just haven't been able to let go that you know not good for you? Oh, it's it's two things for me: Wendy's and pizza. Wendy's okay. and pizza. That's those those are two that I'm like, I be telling myself like, bro, like diabetes runs in your family, hypertension runs in your family. You cannot keep playing yep. like this. <laughs> But every time I, I get around and smell that Baconator in the air. <laughs> I, I eat pizza somewhat often. That's just what I'm down bad. But yeah. Oh, and pizza, too crazy. pizza is cheap. Pizza is cheap. Yeah. Whenever, you, whenever, yeah, you like, say. whenever you're on your knuckles, you can get a large for six bucks. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah, you good. You got leftovers. 
Yeah. Well, I say pizza for me because in a manufacturing environment, like y'all said, it's cheap and you always buy pizza for the whole plant. Really. Oh yeah, I was just about to say, yeah. I know, I know about that plant, like boy, that every yeah, time, man. hey, you know. yeah, get them all pizza, get them all pizza. They used to do that all the <laughs> time. Nah, nah. Effects, bro. You got a different one, Chris, or yours is pizza? No, I think outside of pizza, and I don't even really eat it at work for real. Outside of pizza, it'd probably be. See, I go to a lot of big corporate dinners, so steaks is hard for me to let go, bro. Steaks just be. We go to steakhouse like every other week, bro. It's just hard to like not order a steak at a steakhouse yeah. for me. Huh. My, I'm, I'm at Maybe. to go with ice. I'm going with ice cream. Ice cream. Yeah, like I'm. I, I always. You too old. You too old. No, bro. <laughs> ice cream. Me, ice cream always been like these. And as I get older, I eat it like less. Like when I was like a teenager, I used to bang a, a pint of Ben and Jerry's like every night, damn near. Anthony Edwards Jr., you boy. Now that I'm older, I the entire month, like I say the entire month, I probably had like two, three pints of ice cream in the past like 30 days. Boy, them arteries was screaming. Boy, <laughs> but like my, my diet besides that is almost impeccable and I'm lactose intolerant. And I'd be like, yo, I'm just go ahead and take that L for this uh, for this bit of Jerry's real quick. Custer used to be screaming, unhitch the wagon, damn it. Unhitch the damn wagon. <laughs> Hey, no, boy, I can tell I you some stories about Custer. If I don't hit it, if I don't hit it in the gap, I'm, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> this man here, no wheels whatsoever. What do you do? You think if you would have changed your diet, it would have changed the, how the wheels was rolling? I mean, yeah, I did change my diet, but at the same time, I was in high school. Anthony Edwards is grown. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. And that's another thing I don't understand, bro. When I was in high school, I literally changed my diet drastically. When they was like, yeah, like, this is when we get you in college, we want you to be too small yeah. so, like, we can put the muscle on you. I dropped to, like, 240, 250 my senior yeah. year because, like, I was like, all right, bet. They want me to be smaller. Like, in hindsight, I realized that was too small for a defensive tackle yeah. going to the ACC, but I didn't know no better. I was a little stupid. Yeah, so, when, I, when I started doing mixed martial arts, they wanted me to train at a big weight and then learn my diet so I can cut it down. So I used to train at like 205. Then when it was time for a fight, I cut down to like 180. Bro, y'all big, bro. Y'all know how tall I was? I mean, how much I weighed at 6'3", bro? I was 165, bro. <laughs> 165. I ain't been 165 bro. since about fourth grade, my boy. Bro, was built <laughs> like, a, bro, was built bro. like a 2K, my player, boy. boy was, <laughs> he, he had I, the, uh, uh, slight. Ooh, I just now hit 235, bro. Like, I still ain't even. Yeah, Dang. no, I can't remember the last time my weight started with a one. I, I like, legitimately <laughs> cannot remember. Um, <laughs> me neither. No, me neither. No, it's probably, like, 18, 19 when my weight started at one. Uh, I, Mine wasn't that long ago. I was sitting at 185 for a minute and until I hit about like 24. I was sitting at yeah, 185. Yeah. For me, it was like 22, 23. I was like, okay, now my I'm brothers like two, in 205. Yeah. I have been exponentially closer to 450 pounds than I was to one anything in like very recent times. You a big boy. That's, yeah, I've, I've lost a lot of weight. I'm almost at my plan weight. I'm 10 pounds away at this point, but. Okay, congratulations. Jesus Christ, thank you, thank you. But, I'm almost at my you know, goal, we reaching goals. I'm gonna tell you, it's something called discipline, Anthony Edwards. <laughs> it's what everybody needs to be great. It's what you need, Anthony. That Popeyes is slowing you down. That two piece with a biscuit, you're jumping 40 inches. Good for you. Would you like to jump 42? Would you like to try it? Oh, you can drop 30 on 30 shots. What if you did 30 on 19 shots? Huh? What if we got crazy? What if we got crazy at man? Come on now. This is this is disappointing to say the least. Again, Anthony Edwards, uh, we, we hope you get your diet together, brother. Because you you none of us are gonna tell you how to live your life because you've accomplished more than all of us have at this point done great things all that good stuff but at this point i mean listen listen objectively mm -hmm. speaking there are only up to this point there there have been how many nba drafts josh how many yeah off the top of my head it was 74 so there have only been 74 men in the history of the world to go number one 74 ever Right, like I, I get that, but I mean the success is never mind, never mind. All the things that we've accomplished, all the things that we've accomplished, nine times out of ten, there are more than like seventy-four men in in the history of the world who have done it 
or something very simple. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> okay. far okay. be it okay. for us, far be it for us to tell you how to live your life. However, this is not rocket science, bro. Ocho Cinco versus science is not real. It's it's fiction. <laughs> it's a joke. So anyway, I know y'all tired of us talking about Uggs and Hot Cheetos and Best Friends and Anthony Edwards potentially getting pudgy during the offseason. But come on back next week and the week after that and the week after that. Peace and love, y'all.